Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be about Offshore Accident Lawyer. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. What is Offshore Accident Lawyer? Hiring the right offshore accident lawyer is important if you or a family member has been hurt while working as a dock worker, seaman, or oil and gas industry employee. These jobs are very really difficult and dangerous. You rely on your employer and other responsible parties to put in safety measures and make sure that they are followed. Unfortunately, too many companies do not protect their workers. The attorneys at the Waldman Legal Group will uncover any negligence that contributed to your injuries. They will fight to make sure you receive the money you need to pay your bills and move forward with your life. What damages can I get for my maritime worker injuries? As your offshore injury lawyer, our goal is to make sure that whoever is responsible is held accountable. We will make sure you receive the money you need to recover from your injuries and pay your bills. Damages you may be entitled to fall into two main categories, economic and non-economic. Money for medical expenses, hospital bills, medical devices and mobility aids, medication coupes, therapy and rehabilitation costs. Money for expected future medical expenses, wages lost due to your recovery, vocational rehabilitation, loss of earning capacity. If your injuries will impact your ability to work over the long term or permanently. Not all losses are clear cut or obvious. Of course, non economic damages are meant to compensate you for emotional pain, suffering, anxiety, and lower quality of life. In some cases of extreme negligence, you may have the right to punitive damages. These are decide designed to punish the plaintiff. If you qualify as a seaman under the Jones Act, you may be eligible for benefits called the maintenance and cure. Maintenance compensates the worker for the cost of room and board as they recover. Cure is the cost of the injured seaman's medical expenses, along with the transportation required to get the treatment. Once the seaman reaches maximum medical improvement, maintenance and cure benefits end. Maximum medical improvement means the person is as healthy as they are going to get even if not fully recovered. What is the Jones Act and does it apply to my case? The Jones Act is also called the Merchant Marine Act of 1920. It is a federal law that gives seamen certain protections. It allows them to sue their employer if they are injured on the job due to the employer's negligence. If you spend most of your time working on a boat or vessel in navigation, you may be considered a seaman. If you work on a vessel as a sailor, deckhand, diver, engineer, driller, mechanic, captain, mate, steward, cook, fisherman, or in another capacity, you may meet the definition of seaman. If you do fit the definition of seaman under the law, you are not eligible for workers' compensation. You must seek compensation for your injuries to the Jones Act. Under the Jones Act, employers of seamen are required to provide a reasonably safe work environment and maintain the vessel in any reasonably safe condition. The Jones Act holds employers liable even if the injured worker contributed to the accident some way. Examples of unsafe conditions that employers may be liable for include broken or poorly maintained equipment, oil or grease on the deck, lack of proper training, lack of proper equipment, negligence of a co-worker, assault by a co-worker, failure to provide sufficient manpower, and failure to provide warnings about hazards known to the employer. Generally, you must file your Jones Act suit within three years of the date of the accident. Note that always speak directly with an attorney to understand the statute of limitations and any other deadliness that apply to your claims. Even if you don't qualify as a seaman according to the Jones Act, there are other laws in place that may apply to your case. These include the Outdoor Continental Shelf Lands Act and Longshore and Harbor Workers Compensation Act. If your loved one was killed in a maritime accident, the Death on the High Seas Act may apply. 
serious head injury, severe back injury, burns, loss of limb. Maritime worker injuries are often terrible, life-changing, and expensive. If you or a loved one has been hurt on the job, you need a lawyer to guide you through the complicated laws. An attorney will help you determine the right channels through which to seek compensation for your losses. Don't go about this alone. is my offshore accident case worth? It's impossible for us to determine exactly how much your case is worth without meeting with you and researching your case. Even then, past recoveries cannot predict or guarantee future outcomes. There are many variables that help determine how much money you may receive. Your pre-injury salary, your medical bills and other expenses, your estimated future medical expenses, whether and when you will be able to return to work, your non-economic losses, whether you will pursue compensation through the Jones Act or workers' compensation. Do I need an offshore injury lawyer? If you've suffered an offshore injury, a representative from your employer or their insurance company may approach you with an offer of money. In this stressful time, you may be struggling to recover and worrying about your medical and household bills. It can be tempting to accept this initial payment, but while it may help out in the short term, you are throwing away the right to pursue further action. You will probably not receive the full amount you should for your injuries. Determining which laws provide protection to injured offshore platform employees can sometimes be difficult. The location and type of the platform, whether permanent or movable, determines what laws or laws may affect to claim. Because of the dangerous work conditions and the heavy and awkward size of the equipment and gear involved with working an offshore platform, injuries are very common. But determining liability can be complicated. The injuries may be due to negligence of an employer, a contractor employees of the other contractors, or even the manufacturer's equipment involved in the injury. What should I do and not do after my offshore accident? Number one, do seek medical attention no matter where you are and how serious you think your injury is. It is important that you get medical attention right after your accident. For one thing, your health and wellness should be your number one priority. Medical professionals can test for issues that may not be immediately noticeable. Also, we must have a solid paper trail of your medical problems and expenses. When we file a claim, so either call your personal doctor or get to an emergency room as soon as possible. Number two, do inform your employer about your injury immediately. It is important that they know about the accident right away. This enables them to fix any safety issues and protect other workers, and it's an important part of documenting your claim. Do not assume that co-workers will report your injuries for you. If at all possible, do it yourself. Even better, write a full report of the accident and your injuries on paper. Give one copy to your employer and keep one to yourself. Number 3. Do your best to document the accident. Take note of any witness, collect their contact information, take photos of the area where the accident happened, and any relevant equipment and safety problems. Common Causes of Offshore Accident Offshore and oil field accidents are often preventable. They can happen during basket transfers, line handling, vessel collisions, and diving operations. Many accidents are the same as you'd encounter in many workplaces, such as equipment failures, slip and falls, but because working offshore is a high, more high-risk workplace environment, an injury may also result from a fire or explosion. Despite the big budgets associated with the oil industry, there is sometimes very little training and oversight on an oil rig. This type of employer negligence can result in an unsafe working environment that leads to underqualified employees performing dangerous tasks that they aren't properly trained for, resulting in serious injuries. These injuries are often specifically caused by oil rig injuries. Workers on oil rigs use complex and cumbersome equipment to drill and perform other tasks. Many workers aren't properly trained on how to use the needed equipment, which increases the risk of offshore accidents caused by human error. 
tech accidents. The deck of an oil rig can be chaotic environment where frenzied workers co must constantly be on the high alert. Workers are surrounded by trip hazards, fall hazards, electrical hazards, crash hazards, and fringe point hazards. They can easily be struck by heavy equipment, slip on wet surfaces, or fall when the sudden lurch of whistle causes them to lose their balance. Equipment Failure When equipment on an offshore vessel falls, it can result in a number of severe injuries. Workers can be burned or electrocuted, crushed or even lose limbs. Operating machinery on an oil rig requires a high level of caution to prevent injuries from occurring. Fires and Explosions while not common, fires and explosions are some of the most deadly causes of offshore accidents. They can happen as a result of improperly stored fuel, poorly maintained pipelines, or collisions between vessels when there's a fire. Workers may have to jump off the rig into the ocean, often from a height of the at least 100 feet. Even though workers are typically trained in the proper way to jump, the stress of the situation may result in a jump that leads to severe injury or drowning. Accidents caused by injury and fire can lead to life-altering injuries and even the loss of an entire vessel and the people on it. Other vessels Injuries are also commonly occur on lug bo tugboats and barges. These include falling overboard low lines, parting and handling heavy lines. If helicopters are used to transport workers offshore, there is a risk of injury from a helicopter crash. Damages in an offshore accident case An offshore accident can be devastating to you and your family. You may have injuries that require extensive and ongoing medical attention and rehabilitation leading to medical bills that seem to keep piling up. Or a family may have experienced a fatal accident that has caused endless pain and suffering. When you've also lost your main source of income, it can feel like you'll never find relief. An offshore accident lawyer can help you determine the amount of damages you may be able to recover and negotiate on your behalf to make sure you get the best recovery possible. Depending on your case, you may be eligible for damages that include lost wages, medical expenses, disfigurement, emotional trauma, and pain and suffering. Your attorney will make sure you have all the needed medical records and documentation to provide and prove a tangible cost associated with your injury. What factors can affect your offshore accident case? Offshore accident cases can be complicated. You'll need to determine who you can legally bring a claim against, how workers' compensation affects your claim, how much insurance coverage is available, and in which jurisdiction you can bring your lawsuit. There are a variety of factors that can affect your case, especially when you are attempting to show negligence on the part of the employer, including the following, the amount of risk taken. Working offshore and in oil fields is extremely high risk. The steps you may be required to take to get oil and gas out of the ground may not be even permitted in many other industries. But because of how lucrative the results can be and when you hit the pockets of the oil or gas, you may feel pressured by your employer or other employees to engage in unsafe practices or take bigger risks to get your job done. These practices are often commonplace, however, in order to lessen the perception of their negligence, your employer may try to show that you didn't have to engage in those high-risk behaviors. Lack of oversight There is often no engineering oversight on a rig, meaning equipment and structures are makeshift and assembled by people who've learned from experience rather than official training. When you are doing things like drilling or running high-pressure tracking lines on the fly without technical guidance, accidents are bound to happen. Insufficient training employees often use machinery on an oil rig without any training which can result in injury. They may also be performing tasks that are way outside of their regular duties, such as acting as a fire crew which can put all the employees in risk. How an offshore accident lawyer can help as a tactic to avoid paying out damages, it's common for employers to deny that they are responsible for any injuries to their employees on an offshore rig or oil field. Instead, they usually attempt to pass the buck onto their employees and claim that it was their actions alone and that caused the offshore accident. 
Then they may claim that the employee had a right to speak out and stop the entire rig in its tracks if they saw something unsafe or needed more time to sleep. Some employers may even attempt to re retaliate against employees who bring a suit by making it more difficult for them to find other jobs in the industry. Because of all of this, it can be difficult to decide if you want to pursue a lawsuit, especially if you fear that you will be blamed for the offshore accident or blacklisted from the industry. An offshore accident lawyer will help ensure that this doesn't happen and the facts of your injury are brought to the surface. A lawyer experienced in offshore accidents know how to detect these types of tactics and make sure evidence doesn't get skewed to fit the employer's version of events. They can also help you round up witnesses to the offshore accident and get statements. And that was it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. See you next time.